Connecticut WorkNet, your source for today's employment news. From labor issues to career advice to job hunters and top employers, Connecticut's workforce brought to you news, reviews, the latest trends and developments, instructive and insightful, informative and educational, the in-depth coverage that makes a difference, television that works for you. Hello and welcome to Connecticut WorkNet, television that works for you. I'm Pat Murphy Stark. This week, not getting any bites from your resume? We'll show you what you may be doing wrong. Plus, are you or your child still figuring out what you want to be when you grow up? We'll tell you how you might be able to narrow the field. And making the right career move when jobs are scarce and you need to pay the bills. But first, let's take a look at what's in the works. Where are the jobs? U.S. technology companies are hiring again. Just under 20,000 new jobs have been created since last year. The trend has been modest but solid, despite continuing layoffs and outsourcing of jobs abroad. For the first time in several years, more workers are being hired than fired. The first quarter has seen new jobs in chip factories, manufacturers of data storage devices, engineering, and sales jobs. Economists say small companies will be the source of most new tech jobs, and venture capital firms are stepping up their activity after their own slump. According to Dow Jones, investments in venture-backed companies are up 29 percent so far this year to $8 billion, compared with the same period last year. It usually takes startup companies six months after they receive funding to hire additional workers. So tech employment is expected to increase further next year. Most tech firms are enjoying solid revenue and profit growth. First quarter operating profits at 46 large tech companies tracked by Merrill Lynch rose 61 percent over the same period last year. Revenue at those firms rose 15.5 percent. Well, the overtime controversy continues. According to the Boston Globe, the Labor Department wants to raise the salary threshold for overtime from $155 a week to $425 a week. Officials at the Labor Department say with the increase, about 1.23 million low-wage workers will gain overtime eligibility. In Congress, Democrats have been trying to block the threshold. They say white-collar workers would lose overtime, and it would be far greater than the Bush administration estimates of fewer than 650,000 workers. An economic policy institute found as many as 8 million people would lose overtime. The Labor Department says that's not true. They say the proposal will strengthen overtime protections for low-wage and middle-class workers and empower them. Business groups have lobbied for the changes, saying they're needed to clarify the rules and reduce the number of lawsuits. Now, if you'd like to view these or any of our stories, visit our website at employ.com. Up next, we'll find out the ideal techniques for getting your resume in tip-top shape. Plus, millions have paid a lot of money and waited years to get it. We'll tell you what it is and why. Welcome back. Your chances of landing that perfect job are better this year, thanks to a turn in the economy. But what's going to make you stand out? Well, first impressions can be lasting impressions, and your resume is often the first impression an employer gets. So how do you get across in one piece of paper that you're perfect for the job? Jack Wagner has the details. Thanks, Pat. It's true, we've all been there spending hours poring over our resume. Should I put work experience first or should I put education first? Is it too much information? Is it too little information? We got to join a class where we finally got some answers. Let's take a look. 
A job search is something that most of us will do in our lives, and when it's time, the biggest advantage you will have to getting that dream job is a strong and effective resume. One of the most important things a person should remember with their resume is that it should be an accurate representation of their skills and abilities. They need to project confidence in their resume so that when an employer takes a look at it, they'll have enough interest to call the person in for an interview. That interview is the most important aspect of the job search, but to get the interview, you need a resume. Christina Powell teaches a class in which she helps people develop their resume and the overall approach to finding a new job. I'll do actually job search workshops which will include resumes to help them either find employment, get some career direction, some career goals, who have lost their jobs, so trying to recreate themselves and their career plans and developing that, getting them into school or, or getting them the reemployment services they need to find. Christina gives tips on what to use and what to avoid when creating a resume, explains the pros and cons of variety of resume formats, teaches guidelines to making an impressive cover letter, and talks about what the employer expects. The goal of this class is to teach you to write a successful resume. It's generally the first 15 seconds of reading that's the most important. So for some people they want to emphasize their education and they might put it towards the top. For other individuals who might have a solid work history, the education can actually go you know, towards the bottom part of the resume, but it's wherever you want your focus to be. You want it to be in the top quarter of the resume. Even though it is obvious, some aspects of resume writing are easily overlooked. It should not have any typographical or grammatical errors. That just should not happen. Don't rely on spell check only. You definitely want to use your own eyes as well as someone else's eyes too. You definitely want to make sure that you have the correct header. That would be your name, address, correct telephone number because that's a common error. And for those people that do have an email address, make sure that it's professional. There are many tips and essential bits of information you should know when creating your resume. But you also need to remember that in addition to a great resume, you need to make a great first impression. Christina is a nationally certified resume writer, and her classes are designed to help bring out the best in who you are and what you've done. And I like to motivate and encourage people, so I think that's a help too as, as they're looking for work because I know it can be difficult at times. I always have that open door policy. If you need the assistance, there are many nationally certified resume writers right here in Connecticut. But even if you don't need the help, there are two things you shouldn't forget. Resume is only one piece of who you are. It's just a reflection of some of the skills that you have and what you will bring to your next job. But always remember that the goal is to get the interview. Okay, thanks, Jack. Now, if you'd like more information about resume writing, log on to our website at employ.com. Every year, thousands of immigrants enter the United States. Some arrive legally through work, marriage, or as students. Others, illegally. Nevertheless, getting a green card or becoming a U.S. citizen is a long and complicated process. Joining us now to answer some questions is immigration lawyer Jagar Parikh. Thanks for joining us, Mr. Parikh. So how does an immigrant become a citizen? Sure. You're allowed, first of all, to apply for citizenship after you've been a permanent resident or a green card holder for five years. And if you've been uh, married to a U.S. spouse for three years, you can apply at the end of three years. And also, if you've served in the U.S. Armed Forces, you can apply after one year of uh, serving. And how does someone get sponsored for a job, and, and what does the company have to do? What sponsors do uh, mainly uh, is with non-immigrant visas. Is A sponsor is a company that brings you into the United States and has you work for them. These are companies that need te uh, temporarily need foreign workers. They might be professionals. They may be managers and companies of theirs from overseas branches, and you're going to be working for them. They're known as petitioners, and that's what they do. Also, with a green card, if there's, if there's a company that needs a worker and there's not enough U.S. qualified U.S. workers available, they will sponsor a person to, be, uh, to receive a green card uh, and work for that company. And also, what are the different ways that someone can reside in the United States? Fundamentally, there's uh, three main uh, different ways people can be in the United States. The first is a non-immigrant visa. Usually these are working visas, that you're working with a specific company, you've come here, and uh, there's different types of visas, but you're working for a company in different capacities, and you're, in te you're intending to leave at the end of that temporary period, usually three to five years. And another way is to be a green card holder, a permanent resident. When you're a permanent resident, you're able to work anywhere you want, and you can stay indefinitely as long as you want in the United States. You just have to renew your green card every 10 years. And then finally, uh, for those who want, uh, citizenship is an option. When you become naturalized as a U.S. citizen, you have all the privileges 
of a U.S. citizen. You're able to vote. You can um, leave the country at any time uh, without having to think about it. And the only thing you can't do is, of course, uh, as per the Constitution, is become President of the United States of America. So how does someone get deported? The main reason that people get deported is when they have been arrested. After you've been arrested, you know, they do a check through with INS, and, uh, and that's the, uh, the most surefire way of getting deported. And is a fake marriage common? I always tell my clients, I sometimes have people who ask me, you know, this is a good idea, and I say it's absolutely not a good idea. First of all, there's a lot of documentary proof you have to show, and if you get caught, the first thing that happens is you have a lifetime bar to immigration benefits. So it's definitely not a wise idea, and I don't recommend it. But even then, people try all the time, and more and more people getting caught. For, for an American who uh, engages in that, you can go to jail. And if you're a person uh, who's trying to get into the country, you can be ordered removed from the country, as well as, like I said, a permanent lifetime bar to immigration benefits. So it really doesn't pay for people to do it. Well, Mr. Parikh, thank you very much for visiting with us. Now, if you'd like more information about immigration, log on to our website at employ.com. Well, from rural America to large cities, junior achievement programs reach across the United States. Organizers say it's the largest organization dedicated to teaching young people about business, economics, and free enterprise. One special program the organization hosts gives kids a glimpse of what it's like in the workplace. Diane King joins us now with more. Jay Job Shadow takes students into the workplace to learn about careers. Junior Achievement introduces students to careers through one-day, on-site orientations, and sometimes through more extensive internships. Either way, it's an authentic work world experience for the students, and it's enhanced with classroom prep and follow-up activities. Let's take a peek into this special program. Yeah, I like the cubicles. J Job Shadow is an opportunity to bring students into a place of business and give them an up front look at the world of work. Good morning, Mr. President. How are you? Hey, I've got a shadow here. I've got three. They got teacher you ready. Well, that's because you're a general officer and a big deal. I'm just retired now. Students have uh, an impression of business people, that business people read papers and drink coffee all day. That's all they do all day and, and talk on the phone. If I don't do my best, do you think my boss wants to give me a raise and give me more money? No. When you ask the students what they want to be someday, everyone has an answer. Oh, wow, look at this. Great responses. How about right here? Whether they want to be a scientist, whether they want to be a doctor, whether they want to be a lawyer. Does anybody ever want to work in an office space at all? Yeah, if it has cubicles. <laughs> so, for employees who are jockeying for that corner office, no need to worry about newcomers to the workforce. It seems that, at least for some, cubicles are all the craze. You can get privacy. And at my house, you can never get privacy, so I like to have a cubicle. I want to work in the office space because I get my own computer. Over the past four years, Computer Associates has partnered with Junior Achievement to provide programs to over 20,000 students worldwide. The most enjoyable part of, of partnering with Junior Achievement and working with these children is seeing the smiles on their faces. If we are able to reach one child, we feel that we've been successful that day. <laughs> it has windows, but well, we have some cubes that have windows too. It seems like JA has planned for just about everything. For kids who can't participate in physical job shadowing, there's something they're calling virtual job shadow. Virtual job shadow was designed for those schools, for those classes that were not able to be a part of an experience off-site for transportation reasons, for example, for cost reasons. I'd like to introduce you to Tasha. She's going to be doing your job shadowing today. The most rewarding part of JA Job Shadow is to have students meet business role models, adults that really care about these students. Every student needs a role model. And even if it's just for a day, for a few hours, you've got concerned citizens who are interested in talking to these students about not just about business but about honesty, about character, about integrity. For more information about how you can volunteer for a junior achievement in your community, log on to our website at employee.com. Thanks, Diane. Coming up, could taking a lower paying job hurt your marketability when the job market improves? We'll find out after the break.
You're probably one of thousands of people that apply for jobs via the Internet every day. This can be an absolute nightmare for employers that are bombarded with resumes. Now, after three years in the making, the Labor Department has proposed a new rule to guide employers on how to handle all applicants for record-keeping purposes. According to the Wall Street Journal, the guidance was designed to clarify the uniform guidelines on employee selection procedures in the context of the Internet. Under the proposed rule, the Labor Department wants employers to collect gender, race, and ethnicity data on all job seekers under the definition of Internet applicant. For someone to be considered an Internet applicant, four criteria must be met. First off, the job seeker must have submitted an interest in the job. Secondly, the employer must have considered the job seeker. Thirdly, the job seeker's expression of interest must have the basic qualifications for the job. And lastly, at no point did the job seeker indicate no longer having interest in the employment position. Offshore jobs are creating jobs onshore. That's what the Investor's Business reports. A recent study shows instead of costing jobs 2003, companies added 90,000 jobs due to outsourcing. How did this happen? Well, experts say outsourcing helps free up money to buy better equipment boost output and lower costs, which results in economic growth and creates new jobs. The Federal Reserve Governor said outsourcing is responsible for maybe 2 percent of the 15 million jobs the economy loses each year. But with outsourcing and the trade that goes with it, the economy churns out about 17 million new jobs each year. If you'd like to view these stories or any of our stories, please visit our website at employ.com. With unemployment rates still remaining high, more people are finding it tougher than ever to land the right job. In some cases, people have taken lower level positions that they are clearly overqualified for just to earn a paycheck. But could doing that hurt your career when the job market improves and you want to go after better positions? Well, let's watch and learn what strategic moves you need to consider before taking just anything. In some cases, people have taken lower level positions that they are clearly overqualified for just to earn a paycheck. Now, could doing this hurt your career as the job market improves? Let's watch and learn what strategic move you need to consider before just taking any job. You're out of a job and looking for something in your field, but in some industries, the job isn't there. Worse yet, it may never come back. That was the case with Wendy McGowan, who worked for a telecom company. When the industry shrunk, she found herself out of a job. Now she's working in the finance industry. I was making six figures at my position with the telecom company and had a great title and I have had to go back to school to earn specific accreditations for what I'm doing now. It doesn't take a master's degree to pour a martini or a bachelor's degree to serve soup, but according to the experts at Bernard Haldane Associates, changing careers and in some cases taking a step down is a growing trend for people who are coming from depressed fields. If you are in the market for a new job, following key rules could help you land your next position. If you have to take a job that you're overqualified for, look for a company that gives you an opportunity to move up. In other words, you want to learn some new skills and abilities at this position to where when the economy improves, you have an ability to parlay that for the future. There are some tricky issues, like trying to communicate to your new boss that you'll be satisfied in your new position, so you'll just take anything. We tell job seekers not to change jobs just for the sake of changing. Be sure that it's a calculated move and they know the direction they're going to go in the future. Not everyone is making a change. Ann Mason is a knowledge specialist that is holding out for the right position. Well, I've been unemployed for five months and I'm really holding out for a job in my field. Experts say if you can afford to wait it out, do so. But whatever you do, don't accept the job that you'll hate. Although stressful, change can present new opportunities. That might even make you happier in the long run. Of course, if you'd like to learn more about making the right career move, visit our website. And while you're there, take part in our monthly questions. Log on to our website at employ.com. Up next, take a look at people who collect blood. And Hacker Joe returns with his weekly website review.
Each week in our Career Minutes segment, we profile a job or career that may be of interest to you. This week, we look at the specialized medical laboratory assistants who collect blood, phlebotomists. You're in the hospital for a routine checkup and a big needle is coming your way. Not to worry, because drawing blood takes a special finesse. In clinical laboratories and larger hospitals, specialists called phlebotomists expertly draw blood and run tests every day. According to some health publications, the practice of phlebotomy dates back to the 14th century, where the technique was used to rid people of illness. Today, the practice of phlebotomy is used to diagnose and assess illness or disease. Blood tests save countless lives every day, and while you might be afraid of that needle, with good technique, these medical specialists help to put patients at ease. In terms of what they do on a day-to-day -day basis, well, of course, they they prepare blood samples, but they also have to follow careful instructions while preparing specimens and operate automatic analyzers. Patients in hospitals and doctors' offices are diagnosed by using these valuable tools. Phlebotomists spend a great deal of time on their feet, and some even go to patients' homes. In terms of schedules, while small labs may work normal business hours, larger facilities often have various types of shifts. The job usually requires an associate's degree or certificate from a hospital, vocational, or technical training. Remember, for more information about job and career opportunities in Connecticut, you can visit any one-stop career center. And now, it's time for Hacker Joe Coburn's weekly website review. Have you ever wanted to work in film or television or work as an actor in another country? Today, Joe will show you a website that has tools to help you accomplish your dream, Mandy.com. For those of you who wait tables during the day but still insist to friends and family that you are an actor, Mandy.com may be the site for you. Actually, not limited to only acting jobs, Mandy is home to thousands of job postings for positions in television and film from all over the world. For all you thespians, there are casting calls for all sorts of productions, from commercials to independent films. The calls are very searchable, but as can be assumed, most take place in either New York City or Hollywood. They have tons of recent production job postings in almost any capacity. There are also many more locations to choose from. The ad tells you the position available, the company, when the ad was posted, the duration of the shoot, and if the job is paid. In this business, any pay is good pay. After clicking the ad, you are taken to a more complete explanation of the project with the qualifications needed to apply. There is a link provided if you wish to apply for the job. To apply, you must become a member, but it's free. Mandy also hosts classified ads for people looking to sell or trade video and film equipment. This area is not recommended for amateurs. They also have a list of vendors who sell new equipment in hundreds of categories. Now, one of the more fun links is the film market. You can see all the independent films people have produced and are now trying to sell. Some really bizarre stuff. Overall, Mandy is a useful site that is in desperate need of a makeover, or maybe just a little makeup. The look is plain, and most of the color is provided by the ads. Mandy does get to the point, however, and is one of the leaders in entertainment job postings. It's a shame that for an industry so focused on look and design, they couldn't at least spice up the home page. Mandy.com earned three smiley guys. Wagadi woo. Thanks, Joe, and thanks for watching, everyone. You're invited to log on to our website at employed.com, where you can watch videos, post your resume, and search our database for jobs. And we'd love to hear from you. If you have comments or questions about this or any of our shows, or if you have a story idea for us, email us at info at employ.com. I'm Pat Murphy-Stark. For all of us here at Connecticut WorkNet, join us next time for television that works for you. Major funding for Connecticut WorkNet is provided by the Connecticut Department of Labor through a faith-based and community-based federal grant provided by the U.S. Department of Labor. The Connecticut Department of Labor assists job seekers and employers with their employment needs.
Information about job training, recruiting, and many other services is available at your local Connecticut Works One Stop Career Center or at 1 888 CT Works or on the web at ctdol.state.ct.us.